it has occurred to me that I have not made an Xbox 360 disc cleaning video, which is kind of wild when you think about it because the Xbox 360 is definitely one of my most favorite consoles, if not my most favorite console out there. And yet I've never made an Xbox 360 cleaning video. Let's fix that right now with Soul Calibur 4. I'm actually more of a Soul Calibur 2 fan because I'm an old man, but let's go ahead and clean this one. Inspecting the disc initially, you can see that it's got fingerprints, it's got scratches, it's got all kinds of stuff. Hey, you can see my fancy new camera. You can see my baskets that are hanging up there now. All kinds of scratches that we're going to fix up. This one isn't as bad as some of the other ones. I got some that are, who boy. I got some that, I got circle scratch ones, we got a bunch. We're going to get into all of those, but for today, this is the basic fundamentals of how to clean an Xbox 360 disc. You will notice that this process and method is very similar to the other process and methods that we have used before for your DVDs, your PlayStation 1, your PlayStation 2 discs, and so on. And that is really the core here, is that we're using very simple tools and very simple techniques and methods to be able to get good results out of an item. And that process should be the same for a bunch of different items, just because these are fairly similar in construction. Okay, so we'll get into a lot of that, but for right now, the formalities, cotton balls, as always, cotton balls. I don't know if you know this, but these cotton balls that I happen to prefer, you can actually deconstruct into cotton strips. You'll see me use these a whole bunch because I just really appreciate the level of intensity that I can get out of these things. I can squeeze down on them and I get a little bit more polish or I can leave them a little loose and it's a little bit lighter. And then we also have Nova Step 2. Now here is the thing, okay? Here's the thing about Step 2. This is just the polish that I like right now. Okay, this is just the plastic polish that I like. I spent years and years and years and years using Megora Scratch X, and I really liked that one. And I still like that one for a lot of different circumstances, but I keep going back to Nova Step 2. One, because I can get it in great big bulk for a little bit cheaper than I can Megwares. And two, because I'm just used to this polish. And I've said it before, but I'll keep saying it, is that this polish is the exact same polish chemical wise and composition wise as the disc fixer that we used at GameStop. So there is years and years and years of experience tucked away in these fingers here of using this chemical when it was called GameStop skip fix or disc fix or whatever it was, same exact chemical that's in step two, same exact composition, everything else. So I'm used to this. But the methods that I'm gonna show you, it's got a little pocket, the methods that I'm gonna show you, you'll be able to swap out step two with MIGWARS, with a new finish, whatever kind of a polish you have, you can swap it out. It's gonna be the same approach and the same method overall of just how we're gonna go about doing it systematically. Does that make sense? I don't want people to think that you have to get Novus because I know there are a lot of people in a bunch of different countries that are saying, I can't get Novus. That is totally fine. If you have an auto parts store, a marine or aquatic store, so if they sell like fish tanks and stuff, those places you'll be able to find at least Novus Step 2. You'll find these in like aquarium stores a bunch, which is kind of cool because this was actually partially made for aquariums. Go figure. But if you can't get that, you can find car polishes and car scratch removers at certain auto parts stores. Let me know. Like I said, one of the big things that I do all the time is talking with people in the different countries to understand what their stores are. Here in America, it's like, well, I'm just going to run on down to the Walmart and get myself some Megwire scratch remover. You can't do that in some countries, but I also don't know where you go for certain things in certain countries. And I love hearing about where people shop in other countries. It's just interesting to me. You spend so many years working at a GameStop, this is what happens. You get weirdly interested on retail. Let's go. First thing, as always, is to shake up whatever it is. If it's Megwars, if it's Nova Step 2, if it's any of the finishes that we use, the mirror glaze finish, if it's any kind of finish, you make sure you shake it up real good. I already shook this whole bunch before we started. Make sure you shake it up real good so that it's all mixed and consistent. If you let this sit for a little too long, all of a sudden the water will start to separate from the actual polish itself. No bueno. So, this is my method. I've used this same method for quite a while and this is the method that I prefer. You don't have to use this method. Do whatever makes more sense to you, but this is what I do. And I have done this a whole bunch. And this just makes sense to me. And this is one of those things where 
I want to say it without saying it, you should use a little bit of your own creative expression to be able to figure out what method works best for you. I'll tell you what the fundamentals are, what we're trying to achieve, and then you figure out through trial and error how it will work best for you. I put down four dots and I spread it around and I let it sit for a second. Why do I let it sit for a second and is it a specific time? No, it is not a specific time. I let it sit because I'm letting it dry a little bit so it's going to thicken up a little bit so I have a little bit more abrasion out of it and you'll see why in a second. So then I start to polish just tiny little circles and I'm working, there's that raised centerpiece right there that separates the center ring from the disc and then there's the edge of the disc and I'm just working in circles and you'll see me roll the cotton ball. So I was on this side and then I rolled it to a different side. I don't want the cotton ball to become immediately covered, and it's probably hard to see, immediately covered in polish. I want it to be a little bit looser and a mixture of cotton and polish. And I go all the way around and my camera coloring is off for some weird reason, but once I go back to a different clean part of the cotton ball, I polish, 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 and basically you should be going along until the cotton ball has absorbed all of the polish. Now you will still see scratches on the disc. You will still see micro scratches on the disc. The reason that this is considered step two and not step one or the final step is that it's not necessarily going to be the last thing that you have to do. Sometimes it will be and that'll be great. Other times it's not quite the end. So we polish, polish, polish around here. Nice tight little circles. Until we start to lose some of this, it's very slick right now. So we're polishing it along and it's still kind of gliding along. And pretty soon it'll start to get a little bit tighter and it'll be a little bit tougher to slide on. So that's when we know that this cloth has picked up all of the polish that we want it to pick up, okay? So in which case we then have to, let me see if I can fix my lighting so you can see what I mean. So you see how this side is real dark and this side is real dark. That has picked up all of the polish, okay? I'm still figuring out the settings of my new camera, bear with me. So now once it's picked up all of the polish, you can also break it apart and then you can get to cleaner sides on the inside, move it around, whatever you need to do to get to the different points and areas. So we have a disc that's had one cycle. That's what I consider to be one cycle of polish done on it. How long did that take? I don't know, two minutes, something like that. So we'll run it again because just visually, this does not look much better than it did the first time. And I'm also not really expecting it to look much better than it did the first time. What we're doing is we're reducing the larger scratches and we're reducing the larger chunks and pieces and we're just slowly knocking it down, okay? This is the same thing that is happening in a disc resurfacing machine. We're just doing it by hand so that we can control the intensity and the level and when we know, hey, we've done enough, now it's time to stop. Make sense? We'll add a little bit more light on there so you can see the progress. And you can't really very easily see progress on here, and I know that. When I make these videos, I know that it's kind of hard to see the disc. It's also kind of hard to film scratches on a disc while you're making a video. But knowing that, it's one of those things that I just tell people, try it, work with it. Don't make the first disc that you ever try to clean be the most valuable disc ever. Like if it's the your pride and joy, it's like, oh, it's it's my copy of Rule of Rose and I'm going to pull it. Don't do, don't do that. If you've never polished before, don't start with something that you really, really like. Not necessarily saying that you're actually going to damage your disc. You won't. You won't damage your disc by doing this, but it might make it look a little bit worse than how you want it to look. And when you first start off, the disc might end up a little bit uglier than what it did before. Because what you're doing is you're taking out that top layer and you're polishing things down and it's gonna bring some scratches to the surface. Some scratches are gonna be a little bit more visible. Some areas are gonna be a little bit more visible. It's a progressive kind of thing. So I tell people, don't start off with your favorite, most favorite special disc ever because 
it's going to look scary. And people come to me and say, I've been polishing this disc for like 10 minutes and all I see are micro scratches. Are the micro scratches changing? Does the disc look any different from it did before? Yeah, it looks worse. Okay, well, what you're doing is you're still seeing progress. So you're still actually seeing a change on the disc. Good or bad, you're still seeing some visual indicator that things are changing, which means you are on the right path. Make sense? So we polished this up. We have beaten the hell out of this poor little cotton ball, which is okay. We got a bunch more. So we'll see, we're gonna take a dry one and you can see it's gonna be real smooth and then we're gonna to start to hit some of that. Yep, so you can hear a little bit of squeaking on there and that's okay, because that means that we need to add more polish. So we'll add a little bit more. Now a couple of things, because I feel like I have to reiterate this in a lot of different videos. This process does take a while, okay? For whatever reason, I really like doing this. I like sitting here and I usually either have on a podcast or I have on music. I don't do Netflix as much as I used to when I'm cleaning discs because I more just like to kind of zen out. But I'll tell you what, getting a disc and cleaning it up and just sitting here and polishing it is weirdly therapeutic for me. It's not going to be therapeutic for everyone and I totally get that. I'm not expecting it to be therapeutic for everyone, but the idea that I can sit here with a little bottle of polish and a couple of cotton balls and just my old little meat hooks, just sitting here with some really simple setup, and I can bring my discs back to life by hand, by hand. I didn't go to a store. I didn't have to go find an adult or something. I literally brought this back to good condition by hand. To me, is satisfying. It's very satisfying. The other day someone was trying to clean a disc and they said, I'm gonna go polish it. And they polished it and they came back like 30 seconds later and they said, it doesn't look any better. And I said, we well, gotta spend some time with it. And they said, how long is this gonna take? And I'm from the generation of what takes as long as it takes. But that's not always a good answer because sometimes people are like, really? You have to be in the right mindset. And you really have to be in a good mindset to want to clean a disc. I also just realized I didn't even take before and afters. Who knows if I'm doing anything well? You have to be in a good mindset of, I can tell though, I can tell. Good mindset of cleaning. And what a good mindset of cleaning means is that you have to be in a good mindset where you want to do this and you want to spend some time putting some elbow grease in, putting a little work in. And I'll tell you what, I have not been cleaning as much lately as I would have wanted to. I have a big stack of stuff that I still have to clean. It's a lot of circle scratch discs. It's a lot of Blu-rays. It's a lot of games with stickers. It's a lot of different stuff, but I never want to sit down and say, okay, I'm going to clean this stuff. Okay. I'm going to spend the next three hours cleaning this stuff. I'm going to switch cotton balls because that one's just getting beaten up. Feel free to switch cotton balls as often as you need to so that you're staying with a new clean surface. As these get kind of beat up and older, what happens is you're going to get less and less polishing out of it because it's just going to be the compressed cotton with the polish and it's going to be going against the plastic and you're not really going to be getting as much of a good polish as you could. So switch over when you need to. And so I have to be in a good mindset of hey, I want to clean and I want to sit down and I want to clean some things because it can be very therapeutic, but it's very therapeutic when you put in a good mindset to it. And I have had people, there's probably going to be someone on this comment or on this video that comments that this method takes too long. I get a lot of comments where people say, oh my gosh, it's a three hour video. Buddy, I don't know if you know this, but sometimes I will just sit down and I will just polish discs for hours and hours and hours and hours. Curse of Oak Island, I watched all of it, like all of it, however many seasons we're on now, while cleaning discs. That to me, for whatever reason, like that is a good, nice way to chill out. You have a long day at work, you have a rough day at school, you have a rough day of life, whatever it is. You come back on, you turn on something good, and you just sit here and you polish a game and you know this is what I think is cool. And maybe it's not cool. I don't know. I think it's cool. 
I'm sitting here cleaning Soul Calibur 4. Okay, I know I have a copy of Soul Calibur 4. I have a complete inbox copy of Soul Calibur 4, which means that this little copy of Soul Calibur 4 is not going to stay in my collection. That means that this copy of Soul Calibur 4 is going to go somewhere. It's going to go to a, a youth center, or it's going to go to a children's hospital, or it's going to go to a organization or something. It's going to go to some place that has an Xbox 360 and that would like games. So maybe it's a church group or an after-school program, children's hospital, doctor's office. I don't know. There are a lot of places that I will donate games to. Again, we're probably going to switch. Yeah, we'll switch again. There's a lot of places that I donate games to because I have a bunch of video games. Because I'm also a video game collector. I don't know if you know this. I have a bunch of video games. And if I get duplicates, like this one came in a great big batch of scratched, not working Xbox 360 games. And I said, I have to have that. And if I get a bunch of games that are duplicates, I'm not selling them. Like I'm not. So the unfortunate realism of YouTube and the reason why I do post videos on here when I have to is that there is some decent ad revenue that I'm getting. And I know that, oh, you can use the old ones. I don't know if you know you can do this. Take the old ones and then it just helps clean up the top. So there's ads before my video. And I think there's an ad afterwards. I don't even know. I'll have to check on this one too. But so there's some ads and I make some money from those ads. And it ain't, I'm no Mr. Beast over here. It ain't much. But it's enough that I can go out and buy some games. I can buy some bulk games and I can buy, I got a new camera. Well, I, so there's a video that will come out that will talk about the new camera. I got a new camera. I got a new microphone. So I got a nice little, you can't see it, but it's a little body microphone, like a real fancy YouTuber. And so I buy the stuff that I need to roll it back into this hobby. Okay. And so between the Amazon affiliate links, Amazon affiliate links in the comments down below, and those are just tools that I use and tools that I recommend. And it's stuff that if someone says, hey, where do I get the gloves? Where do I get the cotton balls? Where do I get the blue mats? I just want to show you guys where to get them too. And between Amazon affiliate links and YouTube monetization, I get enough money that I can go online and I can buy bulk lots. Specifically, times when people say, here's a bulk lot of video games and uh, none of them are working for parts and pieces only. And I'm like, well, that's for me. Because what happens is most of the time, and I'm not saying go out and buy bulk lot discs, but hear me out. A lot of times you'll go out and the discs will look bad and they'll either run fine or they'll look bad. They need a little bit of polishing and you'll bring it right back to life. Now, stores can't necessarily be bothered to do that because it's an expense on their part because they have to run their machines and they have to have employees doing things. And so there's a lot of reasons why they can't just sit here and do this like I'm doing now. But if they could, they might. So instead they sell it online and they give it to people like me and then I do this. Or people like you that say, hey, I want to buy a bulk lot of games and see if I can learn how to clean it too. Because that is the only way that you will learn. And the only way you're going to get better at this is by practicing. And by doing it a lot and understanding how you are impacting the disc and understanding how you are polishing and bringing things back to life. And again, like I think that to me is the coolest part. So this Soul Calibur 4, when it ends up wherever it's going, it's not going to stay with me, where it ends up wherever it's going is going to go somewhere cool and someone is going to get it and someone is going to play it, and they're going to go, oh man, I love Soul Calibur 4. I do like Soul Calibur 4, be perfectly honest. And they're going to say, I love Soul Calibur 4. And it's just going to become this really satisfying and exciting thing because you are directly providing to the sustainment of video games. A lot of companies talk about how they're into sustainment. You know, oh, we're into, we're into video game sustainment too. We're looking at video game sustainment goals and we're selling old video games so that we can sustain them and 
we're dumping it. There's a lot of people that are talking about just that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? And that's all well and good, but for me, I need to see, I need to directly see I have polished this game and brought this game back to life so that someone can play it. That's really cool to me. That's what I need to see so that I can feel as though I am actually contributing to preservation. So one last thing you can do, if you don't want to do a full spread, is you can pour a little bit onto a cotton ball directly. And then if you have a little space or area where you go, I just want to touch up that one little space. You get in there and you polish that up. This is looking great. So the cool thing is my camera has a little screen that is like right there. And I'm able to see what I'm doing so I don't have to constantly look down because posture is also important. Sometimes I'll get all hunched over while I'm cleaning. And so now I can sit upright and have good posture and breathe and do all the things normal human people do. So this game's looking good. Like I said, this method, it's the same method that you've seen before, but Put your polish on, do your tiny little circles, and you'll notice I kind of just go, I don't know if I go clockwise or counterclockwise. Answer down in the comments below which one I went. Also, I'm left-handed, so uh, my direction capabilities are not as uh, up to par as the 90% of the world that is right-handed. Go figure. Here, I'll do it right-handed now. For the people in Australia, here's how you polish it right-handed. That didn't make any sense at all. So wait, I polish. Oh, that's weird. I can't go. I can't go in clockwise circles, clockwise on the disc with my right hand, but I can with my left hand. Anyway, look at the things you'll learn while you're polishing discs. Look at the things you'll learn about yourself. But no, honestly, biggest takeaway. You can clean Xbox 360 discs, okay? You absolutely can. Bottle car polish, bottle plastic polish, copy of Soul Calibur 4. Soul Calibur 4. I wish I knew the opening speech. Bottle of car polish. Let's zoom out a little bit. Soul Calibur 4, some cotton balls. We used one, two, three, four, ah, 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 four cotton balls. Copy of Soul Calibur, looking much better. There's a couple little areas we could touch up. Of course, I have no doubts that this will run though. Like no doubts at all that this will run just fine. Um, on a closer inspection, yeah, this is looking great. It really is. There's, and again, there's scratches here and there. The thing, the big key takeaway thing to remember that I always want to remind people of is that when I'm cleaning, I'm not necessarily cleaning for this is mere finish, this is beautiful, oh my gosh, this is the best thing ever. A lot of times when I'm cleaning, I'm cleaning specifically with the goal of can I get this to play? Not necessarily can I get this to dump, that is different. Sometimes when you wanna dump a disc, you have to have it much cleaner than you think, but not always. So over in Video Game Preservation Collective, I have a little cleaning channel over there as well. If you have any questions about cleaning games in regards to dumping, that's a good place to ask because we can talk about is a game fully cleaned if you can dump it 100% and all of that. Otherwise, all the other cleaning channels as of normal, I'm on the Hit Save Cleaning channel. You can find me on Game Preservation Collective. I'm floating around on there. The Game I Discord. Message down in the comments below. Shoot me an email. I'm starting to reply to all those again now that the system's all back up and running and we're doing good. We got more videos coming out. You can clean Xbox 360 discs. You can go out and you can find gross looking Xbox 360 discs and you can clean them. We sat here for the last 25-ish minutes and you saw this happen in real time, wild action. You know what I mean? You can do this. This isn't like a, I learned how to do this and it's difficult. Yeah, it took 25 minutes to do so, and it also took a $5 bottle of polish and a $3 bottle of cotton balls, but I'm also able to clean a bunch of discs from this. At some point, I'll sit down and talk about all the numbers, about how many different, you know, how much this costs, how much the cotton balls cost, how much this costs, how much the disc cleaning costs. It still comes out to, to cents, like fractions of dollars to be able to clean a bunch of discs. 
As always, if you do have any questions, feel free to hit me up in the comments, message, shoot me anything on Discord. Let me know, get in touch with me. The real reason I do this and the real reason that I like to do this is to be able to help folks like you. Oh, I'm still figuring out my lighting. To be able to help folks like you, because honestly, that's the only reason that I do this. I make these videos so that you guys can, can get your games back in working order. And I swear, I love those comments where people say, hey, this was my favorite childhood game. I watched your video and now I brought it back to life and I can play it. That is so, the, oh, that is the best. That is the absolute, absolute best. I love that more than anything else. So if there is a game from your childhood that you're trying to clean up, if you do have any questions about cleaning, it's not just about discs, it's not, not just about stickers, it's also preservation, it's fixing up dense damages, label issues, whatever it is, maybe disc rot, I keep teasing, I shouldn't be teasing about it, we're going to be talking about that one as well this year. Hit me up on all of the things. If you like this video, let people know. If there's a video that you want to see that is similar to this, let me know. If there is a video, like I, I didn't even know that I hadn't done an Xbox 360 cleaning video, which is wild. I have a ton of these discs. So if there is a video that you haven't seen, and I'm telling you, if it's like, Doug, can you make a video that is a Sega Saturn disc being cleaned by Megwire Scratch X? Sure. I can do that. If you're like, hey man, can you clean an original Xbox game using Novus? Cool, I can do that. If you're like, hey man, can you show me how to remove a sticker from an N64 game using a spoon? I'll be like, hey man, I got that video. That's what I mean is that I want people to feel empowered to use the tools that they can get to to be able to bring their games back to life and to be able to keep gaming. So like I said, comment down below if you have any questions or if you have any wonderings or anything else, have any trouble with anything. Let me know who your favorite character from Soul Calibur 4 is. I have a very specific pick. I haven't played Soul Calibur in forever. I should probably pick it up again. Oh man, the GameCube. Oh, the GameCube days at the old Soul Calibur. Oh, that was my youth. At any rate, find me on all those other channels if you need to. Hit me up with any questions. I am here to help. And as always, I appreciate each and every one of you watching. I'm going to keep cleaning. See you guys.